Hello, good evening, Monday evening. Welcome to Northwest Tonight. I'm Roger Johnson. Thank you for being with us. Our top story. The region remembers streets, schools and workplaces fall silent to mark Armistice Day. We'll have pictures from many of the commemorations which took place earlier. Also tonight, putting Manchester on the map, one of Europe's most prestigious music events is held at the Co-op Live Arena. From selling medicines to sell-out tours, John Bishop on marking 25 years of stand-up by travelling the world. But it's 25 years since I ever first walked on a stage and that from that moment I could never have imagined that this would have been what resulted from it. Sir Mark bows out. The Manx missile wins his final race before hanging up his lycra for the last time. I can see the laps counting down. I knew the last 25 laps of my career, last 15 laps of my career, last 10 laps, last three laps, last lap, then the last kilometre. It was nice, I felt every bit of it. And finally, after what has felt like weeks on end, we have seen some blue skies and it's felt really quite pleasant. Will we have some sunshine tomorrow? Well, join me at the end of the programme. I'll give you all the details. People around the region fell silent this morning to mark Armistice Day, which commemorates the end of the First World War. There were services and events across the Northwest to remember all those who've lost their lives in conflicts and wars down the generations. Andy Gill has this report. Representatives of all four armed services gathered at St George's Plateau in Liverpool for two minutes' silence at 11am. Well, I've served in the military for 24 years uh, as a reservist uh, and it means a hell of a lot to me to be able to remember what people have done in the past, to reflect on where we are now and to take pride in the service that I have done and serving with my colleagues in the military. Tony Francis from Walton in Liverpool served in Iraq 20 years ago. Those people, you know, never came home from there in the seven months we were there. So, you know, we start thinking about those people who you, you got to know but never got back on the plane with them. Others remembered the young who sacrificed their lives. It's so moving to come, just matter whenever it is, what year or whatever. It's just how much they've given to, for what we've got, yes. You know, so young and for what they didn't know what they were going into, such young ages, they didn't know. Armistice Day ceremonies were held across the northwest this morning. Students at Manchester High School for Girls made a cascade of poppies as part of their remembrance service. Pupils at Fred Longworth High School in Tilsley joined those from local primary schools to mark the centenary of the local British Legion branch with songs and homemade poppies. The poppies are for the soldiers who, who have fallen for our country and the blood of the soldiers, it's a red bit. I was thinking of the soldiers who died in the war and fought for us and tried to save our lives from the bad and evil. We've been learning that and um, poppies and um, all for respect. I made this to, to like for poppies and from Remembrance Day to respect the people and I put all my effort into it. Andy Gill, BBC Northwest Tonight. 
some of the many commemorations today. Now, Manchester was the centre of the music world last night as one of its biggest events, the MTV Europe Music Awards, was held at the Co-op Live Arena, a star-studded affirmation, really, of the venue's rehabilitation after the delays and dramas which affected its opening, of course, earlier this year. The event was screened around the world, as Louise Sayers reports. From pop, soul and rock... Thought he was innocent, I was so wrong. ..to Afrobeats, K-pop and R&B. It was time to show off Manchester to the rest of the world. Fans gather from early in the evening, hoping to get a glimpse of their favourite stars. I cannot believe I got this opportunity. It's like, it means so much to me. I'm excited. How are you feeling, Christian? Oh, I can't wait. It's going to be incredible. I think it'll be amazing because it's such a beautiful venue. It is a really nice venue. I'm looking forward to seeing Benton Boone. Tyler. Tyler, 100%. I love her. Shawn Mendes, Ray. It's the first time the awards have been held here in Manchester and on this red carpet all the artists will be walking down and into the arena. But how are they feeling about being in the city? Manchester's always we were a vibe. actually thinking of moving to Manchester. It's got BBC, it's I like got the everywhere. canals, I like the football teams. I think it's cold, but I do love it. The people are amazing, everyone's so friendly. And it was also a proud moment for local acts to have the event on home soil. You always expect these kind of huge things to be in, I don't know, New York, London, Paris or somewhere like that, whereas, yeah, it's, it's great to do it down the road. It's been good for Manchester and everybody who, who, who got involved in the Manchester culture because they've all got paid tonight, you know, from working with MCB. I appreciate y'all. For US rap sensation Buster Rhymes, who was there to collect a Global Icon Award, there was even a touch of nostalgia, looking back on memories of his time spent in Lancashire as a child during the 1980s. You know, I went to school, went to karate school, and we illegally went in clubs breakdancing. Trying to be my mind, just imagine. Oh, can you? These are my, my childhood memories of Morkham, Preston, Blackpool, I had cousins in these neighbourhoods. Liverpool played host of the awards back in 2008, but this was Manchester's first time taking on the baton, with the new Co-op Live Arena centre stage. And it's hoped the more events like this can come to the city, the more it can put it and the rest of the North West on the map. Louise Sarris, BBC North West Tonight in Manchester. And don't pretend you'd never heard of Buster Rhymes. We have now. Anyway. John Bishop and Mark Cavendish on the way, as well as a big yellow bear, all later in the programme. First, let's take a look at some of the other main stories making headlines in the North West tonight. And a Premier League referee has been suspended while an investigation is underway after a video was shared on social media in which he appears to make derogatory comments about Liverpool Football Club and its former manager, Jurgen Klopp. The BBC has not been able to verify the video's provenance and authenticity. Uh, David Coote, the referee concerned, vehemently denies inappropriate conduct and disputes that the video is genuine. A man from Cheshire has been jailed for eight years after being caught trying to smuggle drugs through Manchester Airport. 29-year-old Graham Jones from Ellesmere Port had crystal meth worth £2 million when he was stopped in July, having travelled from Mexico via Canada and Iceland. Now, self-employed traders in Blackpool say that new council controls to tackle antisocial behaviour and improve public safety will put them out of business. It includes ice cream sellers who've been told that they can't sell in the key area between the central and north piers, as Jonas Muller reports. Come and be tempted, ladies and gentlemen, the delicious ice cream just feet away. David Prest walks up and down the promenade in Blackpool selling vintage ice cream. Come and have them taste buds tantalised. But the 65-year-old has now been told to stay away from the busiest part of the resort. I want to be in the key commercial trading area I've occupied in and around Blackpool Town Centre and Promenade for 10 years. What does it mean to you for having been Devastation. Here? financial instability. Public space protection orders have been in place for a number of years. The idea was to tackle antisocial behaviour and to keep the public safe. And that's included small areas around the central pier. But this latest extension goes all the way down to the north pier, close to some of the main attractions. This is exactly where I could trade. And I, no more. I'm prohibited now. 
The order will be in place for three years. The footfall drops to around 10% of what you would experience uh, in and around the key commercial area between Central and North Pier, based on my experience. Blackpool Council has extended existing controls because of congestion during busy times. The peddlers using carts within this area has become an obstruction to the free, free movement of pedestrians, particularly at the events. It's also around controlling the free movement of traffic along the promenade, including emergency services. This is a public consultation document. It shows that there is not a problem with peddlers. I think the problem's wide enough, isn't it, to fake both? And it's good for the town. It's what we're all about in Blackpool, so, yeah. I prefer these traditional little stalls than... than You're not bothered shop. by them when you're walking past with your little one? No. Absolutely no, not. absolutely not. I love it. Come on and try one. David says unlike peddlers, traders who arrive for special events such as the air show pay pitch fees to the local council. This isn't about making money from traders. Nothing to do with the events, so there's no link between public, public protection and the public space protection orders and what Visit Blackpool or any of the tourism attractions, they don't, they don't cross boundaries whatsoever. You're more than welcome to this, madam. Other street vendors are allowed between Central and North Pier under strict conditions, but peddlers such as David Prest are concerned for their future. Can't even give them away on this side of the prom. Eunice Muller, BBC Northwest, tonight, Blackpool. I hope it wasn't Eunice scaring them off. Uh, we wish David all the best. Now, it's a brave thing to change career, even braver when you're 40, but that's what he did, John Bishop. Uh, the Liverpool-born comedian, living, I think, in Winsford at the time, working as a sales rep for a drugs company. When he decided to take the plunge, it wasn't a complete jump into the unknown because he'd been gigging for a few years after his first show at Manchester's Frog and Bucket. Well, that was all 25 years ago. And so John is going off on another tour to celebrate and he's been talking to Annabelle. 25 years in stand-up. Yeah. Does it feel like every one of those years? <laughs> <laughs> you know what, it doesn't feel like every one of those years because for the first six years, I still kept my job. I still had my ordinary job. Uh, but it's 25 years since I ever first walked on a stage. And that, from that moment, I could never have imagined that this would have been what resulted from it. Can you remember that first gig? Because it was in Manchester, wasn't it? It was in Manchester in the Frog and Bucket, and everyone remembers the first gig because, you know, depending on how you fall into it and what, where, what the build-up was, but you, you can't anticipate what the result's going to be on that night. And to be honest with you, that doesn't change. Even now, 25 years later, even now doing big tours, every night still has that jeopardy in it. You're still only four words away from failure, really, from dying. And as I'm stood here facing three and a half thousand cockneys, I'm trying to pick my words carefully because the only thing that was in my head was calm down. <laughs> But you've got quite a loyal following, haven't you? I think. Oh, yeah. And is that part of this tour? Sort of oh, listen, did, in all honesty, that's the big thing about it. And so I wanted to mark the fact that this has happened and do a big celebration tour. So that's why I'm doing it in the arena, so I can get as many people as possible, so it's going to have a party atmosphere about it and spend time on the stage thanking people for the support that they've done. That's why I put all the tickets at 25 quid. Yeah, and that's... That is a lovely thought, isn't it? Because it just means that people that perhaps couldn't see you previously or, or go to any yeah. concert will be able to go. But also, that's very close to the price of the tickets on my first ever tour. It's, it's like trying to get it back to the roots. And, and it's also, for me, it's a, it's a very clear way of making it easier for people to come. And does it still feel like a joy? Oh, yeah, yeah, honestly, it's... Yeah, I was very, very close to stopping because I had so many other things happening at once, you know, acting, presenting. There were so many things that were filling up my diary and I couldn't find the time to do stand-up. And in the end, I just said to my agent, cancel everything. I just want to make stand-up Is first. that because that's your love? Oh, it's the first the love. It's absolutely the first love. It's where I feel lucky to have found it and it's where I feel at home. And, that's, and part of the reason for that is because the frog and bucket 
was available to me. So this tour is all the UK arenas plus the Frog and Bookers. That is nice, actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah. John Bishop, thank you very much. Thank you. He is very funny, I have to say. Um, right, let's move on to sport. Richard is here. Um, Mark Cavendish has, has hit the heights so many times in so many different ways. He has. He bowed out yesterday with yet another win. He did, Roger, in, in typical style, really, isn't it? He won a big race in Singapore, came, came home first to put the seal on a truly extraordinary career. His record 35th win at the Tour de France in July cemented his position, didn't it, as the greatest cycling sprinter of all time. But after almost two decades of unparalleled success, the Manx missile has decided to hang up his lycra. A wheel of honour for the Manx missile who was clearly emotional at calling time on his remarkable career, sealed in typical style with yet another One sprint for victory. And so Mark Cavendish takes it. I'm quite emotional, actually. Um, I realised in the last five laps was the last 15 kilometres of my career. No wonder, after an extraordinary 19 years in the professional saddle that has seen him go from promising sprinter to the best in the world. He is the winner of the Tour de France Prudential. In all, Mark Cavendish has racked up an astonishing 165 professional race wins, many at the most prestigious races, with three victories at the Vuelta a España, 17 at the Giro d'Italia, and a record 35 stages at the biggest of them all, the Tour de France. It's genuinely extraordinary. By miles, the most successful road sprinter in the history of the sport. He's very emotional, and it's kind of when he wins a race, it means a lot. I know that in some ways it's going to break his heart to retire. He would love to race for another 10 years if he could. Would you expect him in some way to stay within cycling? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure. I think Mark's a lifer. I'm pretty sure he is going to be in bike riding for a few years yet. He certainly won't be short of offers. Cav also has an Olympic silver medal and a road world title to his name, not to mention the knighthood he received last month. All part of a stellar career that back home in the Isle of Man, everyone is very proud of. He's one of our own and everybody's so proud. He is a really worldwide first-class sportsman. He's a great guy, great family. He means a lot to the Isle of Man. As for the man himself, he was delighted with his Singapore sign-off. What an incredible day to share my last race with, with those riders, to be able to race with them in my final race, to be able to beat them and win that race um, here in Singapore. I'm very, very happy. I'm very emotional, but very happy. No wonder after yet another victory for a cyclist who truly has taken his sport to new heights. I really did, I really did. An amazing period, very short, but very... In we, we tried to do our jobs and, and help the club, which is the... Manchester City still top the WSL table after thumping Spurs 4-0 with a battling point for bottom club Everton yesterday. The Blues earned a one-all draw at Crystal Palace thanks to this goal from Honaka Hayashi. Brian Sorensen's side, though, remain at the foot of the table. Good point, though, that, Roger. Manchester United drew 0-0 with Aston Villa. Liverpool losing 3-0 at home to Chelsea. All starting to build up in the WSL. Well, Rich, thank you very much indeed. We're going to crack on because we're going to talk children in need. My favourite time of the year. And BBC Radio 2's Paddy McGuinness arrived at Liverpool's waterfront today on the first leg of his chopper bike challenge for children in need. We he was serenaded by children at the pier head, singing uh, the Beatles' Yellow Submarine, of course, before heading off to cycle on his chopper to Preston. We wish him well. Uh, someone else who'll be singing her heart out for children in need is a 13-year-old from Cheshire. Her name is Isabel. She is one of 19 youngsters who've been helped by children in need, who have been chosen to sing in the Children in Need choir on Friday night's big show. And I've been to see Isabel and her friends at school in Congleton. We have come so far, and we've reached so high. At first glance, Isabel is just another face in the choir, but she is far from it. The 13-year-old from Congleton was born deaf in her left ear. Now the hearing in her right ear is going, and there's a real danger she may lose it all. But nothing can diminish the joy she gets from singing. We've had success. 
I love music because it's just a way I can express myself in a different way. Even though it can be hard with my hearing, it's just so pretty, so beautiful, and it's so nice to listen to. The choir at Eaton Bank Academy in Congleton is drawn from all the year groups. Isabel's older brother is among them. I've got a room next to her and I can always hear her singing to her favourite songs. And even with the disability she's got, um, she somehow finds a way to I know, be the best she can. People don't understand how hard it must be for her as she might not be able to hear some stuff as well as like us. We get to hear all the harmonies and they're really nice and Isabel doesn't get the privilege of having that. She's a great addition to the group and she's really passionate about it as well. And that's why they've been spending their free time rehearsing with Isabel before she joins the Children in Need Choir on Friday. She'll be the only one signing as well as singing. I'm really excited to show people how children in need have helped me and how I've grown my confidence in signing and how I can share that with other people. Why can't I get things wrong? <laughs> that help Isabel mentions has come from Pam and her colleagues at the Cheshire-based Deaf and Sensory Network. The whole family is learning British Sign Language after doctors warned that Isabel could lose her hearing completely. Isabel was um, terrified and her audiologist suggested that we got in touch with this charity who have been absolutely brilliant from the minute they kind of entered our lives, they were brilliant. Um, just learning that sign language has been absolutely brilliant for us all. Now sign language is just a part of my everyday life and, I, and I'm learning it and I'm trying to do my level one so I can have that confidence in the future and the fact that there's a secure communication for me. Without good communication, we find that it really does have an effect on children. Um, once it improves in, at home, we find that it improves in so many other areas of their lives. I can do it. I can What's your favourite sort of music? So at the moment, my favourite song is by Christina Perry. But I'm only human And I bleed when I fall down I'm only human And I crash and it's called human and it's sort of about the fact that everyone can be them and that you're only human, if that makes sense. So nobody's perfect, nobody's the same, you're just a person. Isabel worries she might wake up one morning to find she can't hear at all. More immediately, she's apprehensive about singing on national TV. I guess I'm a little scared about me messing up because I'm going to be doing some signing, but like, there's also the fact that it's going to be so amazing, it's going to be a great experience, and I'm absolutely going to love every single moment of it. She is fantastic. Keep an eye out for Isabel in the choir on Friday night's Children in Need show. Uh, lots of people, maybe you, will be doing amazing things to raise money for Children in Need. How are you feeling? Good. Yeah. A real well done, and thank you to six-year-old Maddie from Preston, who has raised just over... £1,300 for children in need climbing Helvellyn on Saturday, smashing her £500 target. Doesn't look easy, does it? And as if that wasn't enough, though, she conquered three other Lakeland summits on the same day. My editor's just said to me, how many times can you say children in need in one sentence? I think I've said it quite a few times. <laughs> uh, Kay, you did your bit. Did you I not? did. I swam. Mm. I'm, I'm actually addicted. To, I mean, I've not been back in the pool yet. But I'm not surprised you did. What, 150, 150. lanes in one go? Like you do. Hey, but the people were doing so many. Everyone did amazing. Uh, yeah, I love it. And I love your photographs today. Nice segue. Uh, a beautiful start this morning. Claire sent this photograph in. Finally, she said, I get to see the sunrise. And then we had some lovely blue skies. Not all. We did have some upper level clouds. But once it cleared, many of us did see photographs like here in Lim. So thank you for sending those photographs in. If you'd like to send, uh, join me on socials, you can do. Or send your photos and become a weather watcher. You can see just there how you can join. Now then, what's happening this week? A lot of calm weather, it continues. However, we are going to see some spells of sunshine. A lot of dry weather, though, the change really starts to come in next weekend. And this time next week, it's going to get a lot colder. But what's going on at the minute? High pressure is in charge. Now, it's keeping things quite calm, quite settled, and it's going to stay with us as we head throughout this week. A few changes day by day, but on the whole, we are looking at predominantly 
dry days and dry nights as well. Certainly dry overnight tonight with plenty of clear skies. So it's going to be a chilly night. The winds will remain light. I think for the Isle of Man, we're probably dropping down to about five degrees. And again, coastal parts between about one and three. But inland, I do think we are going to get down to about freezing, if not below. So we are looking at a frost forming and some patches of fog. Certainly for parts of Merseyside, some fairly dense fog patches forming here. So a chilly start to your day tomorrow morning where you've got that fog it will linger for a while but it should brighten up and again I think for coastal parts Cumbria the Isle of Man lovely spells of sunshine it will feel quite crisp with temperatures just a little below where they were today around about 10 or 11 degrees then as we head towards Wednesday, we start to see this cold front. Now, it's going to introduce more in the way of cloud as we head through Wednesday. I think there could be the odd spot of rain for parts of Cumbria, but on the whole, we should stay dry. Once that clears through, we'll return to seeing variable cloud and spells of sunshine for Thursday and Friday. But then we get to the weekend and it looks like it's going to be Saturday, but later on on Saturday, overnight into Sunday, where we will see some heavy downpours of rain. It looks quite unsettled on Sunday. And next week, yeah, we're going to be using the word wintry quite a lot. <laughs> Just how much, though? So, you'll have to wait and see. It's feeling it, isn't it? Yeah, um, yeah. Your, your part in the 1,000 Mile Swim Challenge has mm. raised 135... Well, not you personally. Me personally? No, well, not well you personally. done. <laughs> £135,000 by amazing. the whole team, which is amazing, isn't it? Oh, good effort, mm. everybody. Uh, whatever you're doing, send us your photos at the end of the week. NWT at bbc.co.uk. Thank you for watching. Have a Take good care. evening.